KMR, Kyle Mohan Racing, welcome back to the channel. I'm wrapping up this little 12A Streetport motor and getting ready to throw on a Racing Beat oil pan baffle and I was like, bam, or brap, there's another tech talk waiting to be happened. I've been building motors, rotary motors, for about 20 years, and one of the things that I've seen save a lot of motors, I've ran these on a lot of performance builds myself, really simple, really inexpensive, is a oil pan baffle. Um, in the rotary industry, we call this a baffle. It's, it's really more of a sandwich plate or a slosh plate. This will go in between the oil pan and the motor itself, allowing the oil that's draining back internally from the block to hit the plate, de-aerate, and drain back into the pan. Simultaneously, while the plate's helping with de-aeration, you're also getting the benefits of this plate not allowing the oil to slosh up to the sides or fore and aft in hard cornering. So really valuable uh, engine saving uh, device right here. And these are available uh, for all the different makes and models. Really more of an issue on your earlier motors as you get into 93 FD3Ss and RX8s, they have some internal baffling. Um, but if you're building a race motor, you can always add aftermarket protection. Uh, highly important on your earlier motors where the oil pans have absolutely no baffling internally. So if you're flipping the motor over, a little handiwork, one-handed, you can see internally your oil is going to be draining back uh, from the rear rotor and the front rotor through the different cavities, your middle plate, uh, your front gear, and then uh, your rear gear uh, return right here. So you've got all this oil spilling back down into the pan, and then you've got your oil in the pan. And if you turn or corner hard, that oil, instead of staying in the pan, getting picked up into the pickup tube, will go back up into those cavities that should be drained back, thereby lowering or displacing the oil amount internally in the oil pan, causing starvation of the pickup tube, because the pickup tube needs to stay under oil to allow for proper pumping and continuous pumping. If you start to suck some air, get some cavitation, that can lead to a really quick drop in oil pressure leading to engine bearing failure or just internal problems in general. You do not want to have oil pressure drops or loss of oil pressure. So the simple idea, and this has been around in the rotary industry forever, um, way longer than I've been doing it, Mazda Tricks has these on the shelf. This is a Racing Beat one. There's, there's a lot of different ones available, but all of them have the same idea. You're basically dropping this in between the oil pan and the motor, thereby stopping the slosh from backtracking up into the block from the pan. And like I said, you're allowing that oil that's draining down to de-aerate. And if you're wondering why it's shaped that way, Racing Beat's pretty tricky. It's hard one-handed. Be you sneak that over and spin it around. Did a horrible job one-handed there. But that's your alignment. I need a tripod. Somebody set me up with a tripod so I can make better videos. I may need to do that myself. So oil pan goes on top, and now you have slosh protection and oil drain back de-aeration into the oil pan, benefiting you in both directions for your oiling potential of your wet sump systems. Um, I know we've talked a lot about dry sumps, and uh, here I'm building a traditional wet sump race motor, and I thought to myself, wow, this is a component that I don't think I've talked much about, if ever, and for under $100, you can protect yourself from engine bearing failure. Um, your normal track day cars, if you're running FBs, FCs, um, general rotary engines that have normal oil pans, I would almost consider this a must. Um, this engine actually came in for bearing failure. I found a couple issues with it, and it also didn't have a slosh plate or slosh pan or baffle plate, whatever you want to call this. 
Um, so there really wasn't any protection built in, and it had some reasons why it potentially wasn't making proper oil pressure in the first place. So we fixed those issues and added a little protection. Um, it had a, this is a 12A motor, so there were a couple different pump options. We upgraded to the 17 millimeter pump, a little bit more volume. Um, and we shimmed our front regulator and upgraded our rear regulator. So the whole package now should produce more pressure, more volume, and have a lot more protection from slosh. So, hey, there you have it. A little bit of KMR Mazda tricks, tips and tricks, although this should be pretty standard for your, for your performance builds. And uh, I hope everybody's enjoying the videos. We're going to keep them coming. There's a lot of stuff to talk about on rotary engines. We're enjoying building the channel. Um, and I just got to say thanks for watching. Make sure to follow. Make sure to subscribe. We're all about the brap. Uh, we've got some more projects coming and some more racing coming. Thank you, KMR. I'm going to brap on out of here. Brap, brap.